Good morning and welcome to you here at Maxim Baptist Church. And uh, if you're watching this on our stream or the recorded service, it's the 29th of January 2023. Psalm 133 says, How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. This is where the Lord has promised his blessing, life that never ends. Our theme today is unity, and we live in a world where we're told that it's us versus them. Even in the churches, we're told, we are right and they're wrong. And it's easy to fall into the trap of being holier than thou or ever so humble. Division brings fear and hate. As we worship and listen to God speaking to us, let us think of all that unites us and makes us one and receive God's blessings of peace and love. Let us pray. O Lord our God, how great is your name in all the earth. You are the head over every power and authority. You are before all things, and in you all things are held together, and through you all things will be reconciled back to yourself. We bring you our praise and thanksgiving, for you have dealt with us not as we deserve, but with mercy and love with tenderness and understanding. Every day you shower us with blessings and equip us for the works of service you have prepared for us. Thank you for the security of our homes, for the warmth of our clothes, for the food on our table, for the love of family and friends, that we woke up this morning and were able to make it here. More than this, you gave us your son and welcome us as your children. Lord, how can we thank you? We praise you because the King of Kings humbled himself to become like us so that we might know you and love you. That the Lord of Lords knelt to wash his disciples' feet as an act of love and service so that we might do likewise. Lord, accept our praises. Almighty God, may your spirit lead and guide us in our worship here and now and through our acts of obedience and service throughout this coming week so that you may be seen in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our praises to God. Uh, it's on the screen. And uh, if you're able to stand, please do so.
And if Michael could put up a picture for us. Here is a picture of Aloka, and she lives in Saihet, a region of Bangladesh. And Aloka had leprosy, and she's been cured of her leprosy by the use of uh, drugs, because it is a curable disease. Um, but she has been left uh, partially disabled. Uh, one of her hands no longer functions. And as a tea worker, and there are over 600,000 people in Syet involved in the tea industry, um, she gets paid by the kilogram of tea leaves she's able to pick. And because she can only pick with one hand now, uh, she obviously her income has been badly affected. If you weren't aware, today is World Leprosy Day. World Leprosy Day today. Leprosy is caused by bacteria that attacks the nerves, makes you numb, and it also causes uh, hands to become claw-like. Um, but uh, worse than that, because the nerves uh, are numbed, if you get an injury, uh, it can become infected because you don't even realise you've been cut. Uh, if it gets infected, it can lead to limbs having to be uh, removed. And it's particularly, uh, the particularly vulnerable areas are their feet. Many people go around barefooted or in flip-flops. And I don't know when the last time was you saw the sole of your own foot. I can tell you I can't see the sole of mine. Um, if, if they do injure the, their, their feet and they have uh, no sensation, um, it can easily go undetected. But it's curable. There are drugs that are able to cure it, but it can't reverse all the effects if it uh, has caused damage to the hands. Aloka has created a self-help group, people who come together to check on one another to see if they have uh, any injuries. And they've also created a, a little financial uh, help group to aid people and give people loans. And it's an example of people working together um, to aid one another, realising that they're all in this together. Silet has um, the worst, uh, sort of, it's one of the worst regions in the world for leprosy. It's about 20 times greater than uh, other areas uh, that where leprosy is around. I wasn't even aware Bangladesh provided tea. I think of India, I think of Ceylon, sorry, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Kenya, and uh, places like that, but uh, it didn't occur to me that Bangladesh also uh, grew tea. Um, so if you're a supporter of the leprosy mission, no doubt you would have received news. If you're interested in supporting the work of the leprosy mission, then uh, you can see me, or I'm sure Sylvia has contacts there, maybe. Um, we used to be collecting stamps for them. Unfortunately, they are no longer uh, taking stamps for the leprosy mission, but uh, obviously there are other ways you can support them. Oh, oh, this will be going up on the board to replace the one I took down <laughs> during, the, during the week. Yeah. Okay. Let's come to our prayers of uh, confession and intercession. We all need God's help, but we remember those in special need. There's Wynne and Sue Teasdale recovering from operations. Um, there's Alan, who I understand is here. His uh, surgery needs to be rearranged. We hope that uh, can be sorted. Um, Sue, whose uh, recovery is recovering, her foot is recovering, she's recovering. Glad to see her here. This morning in the news, there were two disasters in Pakistan, uh, a bus that crashed into a ravine with 40 dead and a boat that capsized on a lake with 10 children who have died. Um, we know about the mass shootings in California at the beginning of the week. Um, you know, there's... there's there's always something to pray for. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that there is nothing we can think or say or do that can shock you. Nothing in our lives that you do not already know. Before we pray for others, we need to confess our weaknesses and failings. We need to ask you for help to turn our lives around, to ask for your forgiveness and a change of our behaviour. Lord, we're sorry for where we have failed to love others as we should, to turn the other cheek, to stand up for you and reflect your goodness, mercy and holiness. Lord, forgive us. Amen. Father, we pray for those who are mourning. We remember Linda, whose father Alan passed away recently. We also think of those in California whose loved ones were killed or injured in the mass killings during the Lunar New Year celebrations. Please bring people alongside them to comfort them and offer help in these disturbing times. We pray that there will be no backlash against the Asian communities as a consequence of these incidents. We pray for our government and ministers as they grapple with running a country, the industrial disputes, failings in the NHS and inflation. Please give them understanding and wisdom and a willingness to act in the best interest of the most vulnerable and helpless in our society. We pray for peace, whilst countries have pledged to send additional armaments to Ukraine and Russia have increased their assault on civilians, we wish for an end to the hostilities, to the deaths and injuries, to the destruction of homes, infrastructure and land. Lord, mighty in battle and mighty to save, who promised us your peace, please bring a resolution to this conflict swiftly. There are many other people and situations that need your help, and in this moment of silence, we bring those, some of those to you. Lord, please answer our prayers, which we bring in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to uh, sing again. Oh, for a heart to praise my God. We'll stand if you're able. And after this, Helen is going to bring us our readings.
reading is from Ephesians chapter 4 and starting at verse 1. I urge you then, I who am a prisoner, because I serve the Lord, live a life that measures up to the standard God set when he called you. Be always humble, gentle and patient. Show your love by being tolerant with one another. Do your best to preserve the unity which the Spirit gives by means of the peace that binds you together. There is one body and one Spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. The next bit is from number 11. It was he who gave gifts. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, others to be pastors and teachers. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. And so we shall all come together in that oneness in our faith, in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people, reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children carried along by the waves, blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people who can lead others into error by the tricks they invent. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts of the body fit together, and the whole body is held together by every joint by which it's provided. So when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. Please may God bless our words. Okay. We're just going to watch a very short video. That's called the power of teamwork. So, Team NBC, I want you to help me. I want you to think of a tune in your head. It can be any tune, a worship song, nursery rhyme, carol, anything you like. I know some of you won't feel comfortable doing this, so you don't have to, but if a few could join in, that would be great. Um, Monica's going to join in. I sprung this on her this morning. So she's going to play something off, her, off the top of her head. Um, so on the count of three. So do we know what we're doing? Don't worry about your neighbour. Don't worry about what they're doing. You just sing what you want to sing. All right? Got it? Right. One, two, three. 
Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> what a din. Right, so everyone was singing their own tune. How can we improve the sound? Yeah, let's see if it's better singing the same tune. Um, anybody got a birthday this week? Ooh, ooh. And I think, yes, I think I heard Sue, Sue, this Sue. Sue Ingleby. Ah, right, okay. Well, this is for all of you. Oh, there's many, many. <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> right, I think we won't say any names, but we'll just sing all together. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bob Trip. Happy birthday to you. That was so much better, wasn't it? Everyone's singing their own tune. As followers of Jesus, we are children of God, called to be united with one another. We are called to play the same tune, not our own tune, but the tune of Jesus, the tune of unity, the tune that says Jesus is Lord. But it doesn't mean that we're all the same. We might do the same tasks differently. We may speak differently. We may think in a different way. And we all have different gifts and different ministries. But playing Jesus' tune means that we choose to love one another rather than be critical of one another. Playing Jesus' tune means that we are careful how we talk about one another. We won't say unkind words, but kind and encouraging words. Every person in church and in this church is valued and listened to. Playing Jesus' tune means that each one of us is willing to use the gifts that God has given us to serve him. Playing Jesus' tune means that we are humble, patient, kind, gentle, and forgiving, and are willing to obey him, whatever the cost. As God's children, with God as our Father, we are called to be a family, a family of brothers and sisters. Families might have squabbles and fallings out. They may not speak to one another for years. We've recently been witnessing, I'm sure you will agree, a hard to avoid and extremely distressing family split carried out very much in the public eye. But whether they like it or not, they are family and they will remain family. Nothing or no one can break that relationship. And at Matson, we're, we're no different to any other family. Like any other family, we have our ups and downs. We have different likes and dislikes, different lifestyles, different points of view, unique strengths, as well as failings. God made us that way. And despite our many difference, differences, he loves each one of us equally as we all come together for the purpose of serving him. Love for God is the basis of our unity. What does God say about unity? The Bible instructs us to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We heard this in our reading from Ephesians. We're told to be always humble, gentle and patient and show our love by being tolerant with one another. Unity is a gift of grace given by God and we are called to keep it and preserve it. 
Psalm 133, which Stephen read for us, says how wonderful it is to live together in harmony. God has promised his blessing with life that never ends. The Apostle Paul told the Corinthians, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I appeal to all of you, my friends, to agree in what you say, so that there will be no divisions among you. Be completely united with only one thought and one purpose. Colossians 3.14 says, And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. God exists as the three persons of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He speaks as one person to us. There is no division between the Trinity and our challenge is to ensure that there is no division between us. Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for the love in presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity begins not in demanding that others change, but in admitting that we aren't perfect ourselves. Unity grows as we learn to accept others. It grows over time. It grows with happy times, sad times, and difficult times. There's no room for vanity or self-interest. A little bit of a quiz for you. Who sang this? United we stand, divided we fall. And if our backs should ever be against the wall, we'll be together. Together, you and I. You've got to be of a certain vintage to know this. I, I don't expect Kane and the girls to know this one. Who knows? No? 70s, we'll be together, you and I. Come on, Bob, you're nearly there. It's on the tip of your tongue. The Brotherhood of Man in the 70s. Yeah? What about, I think Stephen will know this one. Make someone happy, make someone smile. Let's all work together and make life worthwhile. Because together, we will stand every boy, girl, woman, and a man. 70s, well, yeah, 70s again. Come on, Roz, you know this when you were a rocker. Come on. Make someone happy. Make someone smile. Let's all work together and make life worthwhile. Because together we will stand, every boy, girl, woman, and a man. Toys. Toys. <laughs> no. No. You have to sing it to us. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't you like my singing then, Stephen? Oh. Make someone happy, make someone smile. Let's all work together and make life worthwhile. Because together we will stand. Every boy, girl, woman, and a man. Yeah, can't eat. Can't eat, can't you? No? Can't eat, yeah. Can't eat, yeah. The other one was united we stand, divided we fall. And if our back should ever be against the wall, we'll be together, together, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks, Barney. Thank you. <laughs> this, coming <laughs> this coming year, our family faces many challenges, not least who will fill the gap left in our family when Margaret departed last year. We know that gap will be filled with a person, persons, maybe a family, and that the father of our church family knows who already who that person is. Like every good father, he wants the very best for us. It would be good to remind ourselves of our covenant. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18, And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, 
and on this rock foundation I will build my church and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. So if you can, please stand. Mike will put the words on the screen and we'll say out loud our covenant together. <coughs> we, the members of Madison Baptist Church, accepting God as our Father and Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord, commit ourselves to love and serve him who laid down his life for us. By his grace and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we will seek to live out our Christian calling. That is to good good life. Show the love of Jesus to all those we meet. Become mature followers of Jesus. Further God's purpose in the world. To this end, we will join together for worship, the Lord's Supper, teaching, and mutual encouragement. We will pray and care for one another in the strength of His Holy Spirit. We will use our witnesses to build up the local church. Be open to His leading, we will strive to fulfill Jesus Christ's commission, to baptize and encourage others in becoming wholehearted disciples of Jesus. Please sit down. If we are united around him, then he will bless us as Psalm 133 promises. Our church will grow, doors will open, and our church will be a place full of life and joy. So let's all play the Jesus' tune rather than our own. Let's pray. Loving Father, we declare that we will love you with all our hearts, souls, minds and strengths. As a church family, we confess that we will love one another as ourselves. As your children, we will walk in unity and love with one another. Grant us the patience to work together with understanding and compassion in our hearts. Let us not be rude or arrogant towards one another as we light the way to your heavenly kingdom. We pray this trusting and believing in you. Amen. The last verse of a responsive poem, which was written for Spring Harvest 2012, goes, A broken body, torn apart, mars God's image, breaks God's heart. And yet our Father knows how the end will be, when all his kids will sing in harmony. The bride will dazzle, her branches bloom, so add your voice to him the tune, that we are one in Christ. We're going to sing Bind Us Together, and if we can, I'd like us to either link arms to make a chain, so if you can just do your best. Monica's joining in, so she's not going to play, so um, we're just going to sing it without the piano. Okay. Do you want to start us off, Ross?
Some notices, of course. Um, toddlers on Tuesday. Renew on Friday. Food handouts Tuesday and Saturday. Next Saturday for church members. Church members meet in here at 10.30. Please be here at 10.15, ready for 10.30. Minutes um, of the last meeting and agendas for this meeting are here. If you take them today, please remember to bring them back with you on Saturday. Otherwise, we won't have enough. Otherwise, leave them here and just pick one up on Saturday. Um, Hannah, Abby, I hear that you're returning to Oxford Brooks University today. Is that right? After lunch, can you come up here and we can say goodbye? Is there anyone? Kane, do you want to come and help pray for them? I knew you would. Anyone else want to come and pray? Sue's going to come and pray. Alan's going to come and pray. Can I quickly say it? You can say something. Yeah. Yes, of course. You can. Um, just thought we'd give you all a little update. We're over halfway through the course now, uh, so we so we finished next May, not not a couple of months time. But um, so yeah, we appreciate your prayers for going back this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that we have the ability to learn. Some people have the gift of teaching. We thank you for the opportunities that uh, Abby and Hannah have uh, at university to learn and to develop and to grow as young people. We pray that uh, you're with them and that they will know that we as a church are with them wherever they happen to be and in whatever situation they find themselves and know that uh, if they need us we're here and uh, we will continue to pray for them and uh, lift them up before you. Lord we pray for their safe journey today back, uh, back to their uh, digs and uh, we pray that uh, they will continue in fellowship with you um, there in Oxford. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to pray that, as Stephen says, that Hannah and Abby have a safe journey home, that there are no troubles when they get back. Um, hopefully the house is still there. Uh, <laughs> and that the rest of this term goes nice and smoothly no bumps in the road, no problems to deal with. Um, but if they do come up, that I pray that you will guide them through them and through the rest of this rest of the year and the next year and the future as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too.
Please be seated for a moment and I'm going to ask the children to come up to show us what they've been up to this morning. Are you going to come? Reagan needs to come apparently. He's got eyes. Oh, knew he would have two lots. Now, they're spiky things. That looks like a face. I don't tip this one up because I think the balls will we'll fall, fall out. Is that also a face? It looks like a monster's face. <laughs> We've been doing the story of when Moses has met with God, and then when he came down the, the, the mountain, his face was shining. Oh. So they've been making some shiny faces. And I thought that your face is from the shining. <laughs> is that yours? Yeah. Is that yours? <laughs> We've seen. This one has got sparkles. Ah, oh, it's also gooey. And, and I'm gooey and and glittery. Thank you very much. We're going to uh, say the grace together, uh, one to another. Um, the grace comes at the end of this reading, at the end of uh, 2 Corinthians. And now, my brothers and sisters, goodbye. Strive for perfection. Listen to my appeals. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people send you their greetings. And together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Tea and coffee? Yes. Tea and coffee.